What's up? I am The Average Dad and I typically review mobile phones on my tech channel. However, I'm trying something a bit different. Recently, I took a phone on a trip to the Geneva International Motor Show. I've done the camera test, I've done the phone video, but I wanted to get my overall experiences of travelling to Geneva, touring the city, and more importantly, the motor show itself. Let's go. So first things first, the actual getting there. Getting there couldn't be easier. I live in Edinburgh. There are flights through EasyJet all the time going to Geneva. Flight for me was 6am in the morning and I actually came back the same day at 8.50pm local time. So all in all, I was in Geneva for about 16 or 17 hours and I had a great time. I was planning on going to the motor show and spending the whole day there. If you don't know location-wise, the convention centre is right beside the airport. It's maybe a 15-minute walk, super accessible, easy to find. Going through security, handing over your ticket, everything was smooth, couldn't be easier. And then you enter the main hall. And this was where I encountered the first issue, the crowds. This is the first international motor show held in Geneva for about four years. We had COVID and then the last Geneva international motor show was held in Qatar because the Middle East get everything just now. So I expected it to be busy, but man, there has to be at some point a cap as to how many people you allow in to a, a show because it just detracts from the experience. So when I first walked in, there was the main stage area or arena and it had unbelievable cars. The Aston Martin Valkyrie, the McLaren P1, the Senna, Porsches, Ferraris, everything you can imagine was there and they all looked pristine. But to see these cars, you were four, five, sometimes ten people deep all around this arena. You were having to barge through. Now, I'm not a small guy, but there was kids there. There was lots of women. So I didn't want to be too aggressive to get to the front to get photos and videos for my, as mentioned, camera test video. So I waited patiently lots of times to get to the front. And the way the cars were laid out... To get the best angle, you really wanted to be at the front of the ropes at different points. And again, this maybe took about 45 minutes, if not longer, to get some shots, as you can see here. And that was just a bit frustrating. We then moved on to the right-hand side of the top floor, and there was some classic cars. This was quieter, for obvious reasons. Youngsters, kids, they're not too bothered about a Mura or any of the old Jaguars or classic cars kicking about. Now, one thing I did not do deliberately was look at any YouTube videos from the media day held previously to the day I went, purely because I didn't want any spoilers. I was excited to see what stalls, shows, cars they had brought to the show. So you go down the escalators to get to the bottom floor, which is kind of like your main level where all the different car manufacturers have their setups. And this was where my second issue came. So in amongst all the crowds was the distinct lack of cars. The Geneva International Motor Show, unless I'm wrong, is the largest motor show in Europe. And just to give you an idea of what cars weren't there, when you think of the biggest European manufacturers, you probably think of Porsche, Mercedes, BMW, to name but a few. Ferrari, Maserati, all those ones. None. Zero. Lamborghini, none. No stalls whatsoever. The closest you came to getting a luxury or fast car stall was probably lucid 
the Californian Electric Car Company. Then there was some Chinese brands, and then there was Renault and Dacia. That was basically it. As you can see here, some still cool cars, and one was set up like a van with a gaming console inside. But you can also see from the distinct lack of photos that there just wasn't much to take pictures of. It was the ultimate letdown. So I mentioned I wanted to be there most of the day until I got my flight home at night. I ended up lasting two hours maximum before I hopped in a taxi and went into Geneva for some lunch and a wander about. See the sights in there, which by the way, I can highly, highly recommend. Now, I'm going to talk price at the end of this video and tell you how much I actually paid for this. But before I talk about that, there was a third issue I wanted to touch on. I don't know if this is a regular occurrence. I don't know if there was an issue with ventilation or they were just cooking something different. The smell that started to circulate around the arena. I think it was fondue. I'm not joking. We're in Switzerland. Cheese. It happens, but at the back of the Renault stall was a doorway that took you into the main cafeteria. It was wretched inducing. I I was almost sick physically. I, I, know, I know I sound like an absolute weirdo, but the smell was so overwhelming that me and the people I was traveling with couldn't take it. We definitely couldn't eat in there, let alone just walk through there. So this was right at the end of our motor show experience, so we're happy to go outside, get some fresh air and jump in a taxi. So I think to recap my motor show experience, it delivered a lot at first. Didn't have to queue long to get into the actual hall. When you got to the hall, there was some amazing cars on the top level. While not dedicated stalls, there were still Porsches, Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I shouldn't put plural. There was still a Porsche, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. Not plural. But because of the crowds, because of the lack of cars, ironically, and because of the smell, it was a complete disappointment. So my first experience of the Geneva International Motor Show will absolutely be my last. Now, on the plus side when we talk about price. The price for a ticket was 25 euros, which is about 20 pounds here in the UK. That's completely reasonable. 20 pounds for a couple of hours entertainment. And as I say, it was a couple of hours. I'm absolutely fine with that. And flights for me direct from Edinburgh were anywhere between 85 and 100 pounds. Again, completely reasonable. My whole day out in Geneva with lunch and taxis, the motor show and flights, was under £200. So to get that, for me, once in a lifetime experience, I was happy with that. But if you were a car enthusiast that was dying to go to the motor show and didn't have the resources or you're on your own so you didn't get a taxi, I would be absolutely struggling to know how you filled an eight hour day, for example, in there. So this was just my quick motor show, first time doing a car video, if you like. Um, I have an interest in cars. I just know that when I did look up motor show content when I returned, there was just very little there. So I thought I would give my two cents worth as to my experience of the International Motor Show. If you've enjoyed this, please smash like. And if you happen to stop by this channel, check out my phone videos. They're pretty good. Until next time.